Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway recently opened at Disneyland in California to rave reviews. The queue adds a lot more substance to the attraction, and Toontown finally has a dark ride that families of all ages can enjoy. While most Disney fans are quick to point out major differences between the Disneyland and Hollywood Studios versions, like the extra hallway and reverse picnic scenes towards the end of the attraction, many seem to miss the multiple quality of life changes done to improve the overall rider experience. Even though many of these changes may be small, they have a big impact on improving the flow, immersiveness, and quality of the attraction in Disneyland. With that being said, let's take a deep dive at exactly what has changed between Disneyland's and Disney Hollywood Studios' version of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Believe it or not, the first of these changes we see between Disneyland's and Disney World's version of the ride starts in the loading area. When the vehicle starts moving, a sound effect simulates the sound of a train car being yanked. In the original version of the ride, there's one large bang before all the vehicles start moving. In Disneyland's version, each of these cars have their own individual sound effect. Both of these soundtracks simulate the real slack of a train, where the extra space between each car is stretched out. Personally, I like the version in Disneyland better, since the sound effect makes the train feel a lot smaller and not like a huge industrial freight train. The next substantial change we see is in the scene where the train enters a tunnel. Along with completely different lighting, new details were added to the Disneyland version. In Disney's Hollywood Studios, the whole tunnel was filled with a rock-like texture with wooden beams supporting the roof. However, in Disneyland's version, the first section of the tunnel has been partially redone to feel more like a highway underpass with stone bricks and pillars supporting the structure instead of wooden rocks. There's also new details toward the left of the ride vehicles where it looks like workers were in the middle of repainting the tunnel white. The next scene with Mickey and Minnie driving the car has also massively been changed. In the original version, Mickey and Minnie immediately crash into the track switch, causing it to teeter back and forth before falling over. While this was a good scene, guests sitting in the third and fourth vehicles never really had a good view, oftentimes leaving them confused as to what happened. To remedy this problem, Disney Imagineers completely redid the scene for Disneyland, Firstly, they opened up more of the wall to the right, allowing for a less obstructive view of Mickey and Minnie towards the back of the train. Next off, they changed when Mickey and Minnie would slam their car into the track switch. Originally, Mickey and Minnie would hit the track switch very early on, towards the beginning of the scene. In Disneyland's version, Mickey and Minnie hit the track switch much later on, allowing for more guests to see the chaos unfolding more easily. In the original version of the ride at Hollywood Studios towards the end of the scene, Mickey and Minnie just kind of sit there awkwardly for a few seconds before resetting for the next group of vehicles. However, at Disneyland, Mickey and Minnie now try to rev their car, attempting to get unstuck before resetting for the next group of vehicles. The desert scene has also been changed for the better. In Disney's Hollywood Studios, the scene lasts just long enough for the first and second cars to go through it. However, for the third and fourth cars, they are met with a very awkward pause. Not a Similar to the previous scene, guests in cars 3 and 4 had a substantially worse experience compared to those sitting in the first and second cars. To fix this issue, Disneyland's version was extended with new dialogue and animation. This not only made the scene longer, but also helped with making the ride experience in the third and fourth cars less awkward.
Disneyland's version of the ride also slightly changes the set design, knocking down a few rocks to better expose the skyline, as well as adding this little bridge area with animated blinking eyes. In the amusement park area, Disney actually removed things from the new version in Disneyland. Originally, as the tornado wrecked the amusement park, the flags in front of Mickey and Minnie would swing back and forth, reflecting which way the wind was blowing. At Disneyland, the effect was removed entirely, making the flag sit completely stationary. Believe it or not, this isn't the only place where Disneyland's version had things removed. We'll see more of that later on. The next scene with the spinning tornado has also been slightly changed. The props toward the top of the tornado, like the trumpet and balloon, spin faster compared to the version in Florida. Moving on to the tropical island scene, the timing and animation of the scene has been slightly altered to make the experience better for guests in the third and fourth cars. Originally, as the first two cars entered into the room, the scene immediately starts. While this might seem fine at first, it made the experience extremely awkward for guests in the third and fourth cars, who enter the scene just after the transition. To fix this issue, new tornado wind animation was added as the first two cars enter the scene. Then, as the third car enters into the room, the scene plays out as usual. Here's a comparison of the ride experience from the perspective of the last car from both versions. In the underwater scene, there's a massive change that most people have already pointed out, and that is the different animation with the giant squid. Instead of just casually floating around aimlessly, he is now latched onto a few rocks as one of his tentacles hold up the drain plug. There's also a short Pluto cameo as he's sucked into the drain pipe. Outside of a few slight changes to the lighting and room size, the scene with Pete jackhammering the town stays relatively the same. The scene with Daisy, however, has been altered. Since Disneyland's version makes the area with Pete longer and Daisy's room skinnier, the vehicles see less of the scene compared to the original version in Hollywood Studios. However, the massive change in this scene is how the vehicles are programmed. Now this one is a little hard to show on video, so you'll need to take my word for it. I went on both the Hollywood Studios as well as the Disneyland version of the ride in a span of about a week, so this change stuck out to me pretty well. The waltzing in Hollywood Studios is much more violent. Guests tend to slide back and forth from their seats as the vehicles move. In Disneyland's version, the waltzing has been massively toned down, with the vehicles moving less violently and more smoothly. After waltzing for a few seconds, the vehicles then switch to a conga line dance and exit the scene. In the Hollywood Studios version, the vehicles just kind of move back and forth a little awkwardly, as if they're like a teen going to a prom dance for the first time. However, in Disneyland, they change the movement to more closely match doing the conga, where the vehicles quote unquote would kick their legs out to the music. In a more technical term, the vehicles would jerk either left or right in sync with the music at the end of every measure. In the transitional scene between the dance and factory rooms, outside of a few prop changes, the animation on the top window was changed to once again improve the rider experience regardless of which car you board. Previously in Hollywood Studios, if you were the last car to enter into the scene, you would just barely see Minnie before she jumped into the pipe. In Disneyland's version, Minnie stays on screen substantially longer, visibly freaking out over the guests before comedically pulling out a stop sign. Moving on to the factory scene, many of the moving props originally found in Disney's Hollywood Studios were removed in Disneyland's version. Most of the machinery and gears on both sides of the vehicles would collapse inward and transform into trees in Hollywood Studios with the help of projections. In Disneyland's version, apart from one or two moving sets, the transitions are mainly done by using projection mapping. The scene is also slightly shorter in Disneyland's version. As many people have already pointed out, there is also a new scene that has been added into Disneyland's version. Whereas the vehicles used to immediately transition into the picnic scene, they now travel through a very long barn accompanied with new animation from Goofy. However, this new animation was very obviously built 
for Hollywood Studios, since Goofy not only looks, but also waves in the wrong direction. The picnic scene, outside of size, prop, and lighting changes, was mirrored in Disneyland's version of the ride. Excluding a few props and lighting changes, those are all the changes I personally saw between Disneyland's and Disney Hollywood Studios' version of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Let me know if you saw any changes yourself, and make sure to like, share, and subscribe if you liked the video.